In the previous video, we looked at how dimensional analysis can be used to check that an equation is homogeneous with respect to its dimensions. And what we're going to do in this video is extend that a little bit further in order to determine some unknown powers in a given equation. Now, the equation that we've been given is down here, where v equals a constant times height to the a times gravity to the b. And we're going to try to find a and b in that equation. And our scenario is shown on the right hand side. What we have is we have an object that's being lifted through a distance h. And what we want to know is if we release that object, what will its velocity be as it passes that distance h? So after falling through a given distance h, what is the velocity of that object? Now, if we refer back to the equation, k is just a constant. And we already know that constants don't affect the dimensions. So what we're going to do, because we know that this equation must be homogeneous with respect to its dimensions, is we're going to balance the dimensions on the left and right hand side of the equation. Now on the left hand side we have velocity. So first of all, if we take our dimensions of velocity, and we know that the dimensions of velocity is L, T to the minus 1. We've found that previously. That represents the left hand side of our equation. Now what we know, in order for that equation to be homogeneous, we know that the right hand side of the equation, the dimensions must also eventually equal LT to the minus 1. And we're going to find the values of A and B that make that true. So let's inspect our right hand side. What we have is we have height to the power A. Well height as we know, is a length. Heights, diameters, radiuses, distances are all just a length. So we have length to the power a. And next in our formula, we have gravity. Well, as mentioned in a previous video, gravity is an acceleration. And accelerations have the units lt to the minus 2. In our formula, we have gravity to the power b. So what we've reduced our right hand side down to in terms of its dimensions is a length to the power a multiplied by lt to the minus 2 to the power b. Well what we can do next is expand out our brackets. So we have length to the a, that's going to remain the same. But we have inside the brackets l to the 1, remember l is just the same as l to the 1, times b. And the reason we're multiplying those together is because we've got length to the power 1 raised to the power b. So we multiply those two indices together. So now I've got length to the b. And we're going to apply the same reasoning to t to the minus 2, all raised to the power b. Well, minus 2 times b is minus 2b. t to the minus 2b. Now let's simplify that a little bit further because we've got L to the A times L to the B. This time because we're multiplying them together, we're actually going to add those two indices together. So what we're left with is L to the A plus B. That's all raised to the A plus B. T to the minus 2B. OK. Now let's just recap what we're trying to do here. We're trying to find the values of A and B that make our right hand side equal to lt to the minus 1 because our left hand side was lt to the minus 1. Remember l is just the same or equivalent to l to the 1. It's helpful to include the indice there as a reminder. So what we're looking for is the values of a and b that make these two statements equal. Well what we can see then is that a plus b must equal 1. And where I'm getting that from is because we need L to the 1 to be equal to L to the A plus B. So let's write a new statement down here. Let's write A plus B equals 1. Well, at the moment, we don't know what A and B is, but we know that A plus B equals 1. And we can write another statement, because if we inspect the indices of the T's, we can see that minus 2B is the same as minus 1. So minus 2b equals minus 1. Well now we have something we can solve, because if that's true, then what we can also say 
is that b equals minus 1 over minus 2, which is just a half. Now, if we return to our first formula here, we had a plus b equals 1. Well, we now know that b is a half. So we can write a second statement that says a equals 1 minus b, or 1 minus a half. Therefore, a is also equal to a half. a equals a half, b equals a half. So now let's relate that to our original equation. We had v equals k, well we've still got v equals k, the constant hasn't changed, h to the a, well we know that a is a half, g to the b, and we know that g is a half. Now hopefully you remember that raising something to the power half is the same as square rooting it, so in actual fact what we have is v equals k times the square root of h, g. And although we don't know the value of the constant there, we do have a formula that links v, h and g together. And we know that that formula is homogeneous with respect to its dimensions. Now I've deliberately chosen something that we can prove in another way. So let's just clear some space. And in actual fact, what we have here is a conservation of energy problem. We have an object that's being given potential energy, EP. And when it falls through a distance h, that potential energy has been converted to kinetic energy. Well, we know from the law of conservation of energy that potential energy equals kinetic energy. All of the potential energy that was given to the object gets converted to kinetic energy as it falls a given distance. Potential energy is mass times gravity times height, and kinetic energy is a half mv squared. Now if we rearrange this equation to make v the subject, the first thing we need to do is multiply each side by 2. So we get 2mgh equals mv squared. And the next operation would be to divide each side by m. Well, dividing each side by m, the m's disappear. So we have v squared equals 2gh. Now the next step to get v on its own is to square root each side. So square rooting each side, we get v equals the square root of 2gh. Now what I can do is express that slightly differently. v equals the square root of 2 times the square root of gh. Or to keep the format consistent, we can write that as root 2 root hg. Now if we look at the equation that we showed to be homogeneous, v equals k root hg. And we've just found the equation using the law of conservation of energy, v equals root 2 root hg. These two equations are the same, except when we've rearranged the conservation of energy equation, we've actually determined the value of that constant. But we know our equation of the form v equals k root hg is homogeneous and accurate for representing that scenario.